Oh, good day there. Here's a Anytone radio. So it's the Anytone AT778UV. Now this is not new. I bought it second hand at a ham fest. So let's have a look and see what's in this box. I've been eyeing off this radio for some time and it was going for a price that was too good to refuse. So it may not have been packed the same way as you would get it new, but it does have the manual and looks like the standard accessories are all there. So hopefully I have all of them. And here are the optional accessories. Now, I don't know if it's got the PC cable with it. That would have been good. If it does, let's have a look. And the programming software, well, you can probably get that off the internet. So, manual's quite good, as in the text font. I can read that easily. Some of the manuals that I've seen lately are just way too small, and you've just got to download it. I probably will download it anyway, but there it is there. Microphone. Take that out of its cover there. So that looks good. Um, came from a non-smoker home, so that's always something worth asking. We'll have a good look at that. Power cord, like I said, it has been used. Bracket. Um, but he said it has been used but hardly used, so that sort of helps prove it there. That bag hasn't even been opened. And the radio. Wow, that is small. So usually when you see the radio on the computer screen advertising it, you get the impression that it's quite a big, decent sized radio. Um, yes, they do have the measurements. It's still got the cover on the screen. They do have the measurements, but as a radio operator, we don't really read that. Um, but look how small that is. So it looks like um, nice things on the bottom there to hold it. Yeah, I'm going to enjoy setting this up and seeing how easy it is to program and how easy it is to work. Um, I've read a few reviews and most are good, but... Uh, there's always a couple that complain about something, so we'll see how this goes. All right, so I'm gonna put in a repeater just in via the radio. Now, although you can do it via the computer, it's always good to know how to do it via the radio as well if you're stuck out somewhere without a computer, which often happens with me. So the frequency is 439.8, so you can see I'm in VFO mode, so it's 439-800, so we'll check the reverse, you can see it's negative 5, so that's right for this repeater. Now we just need to check the tone squelch, we'll change the receive tone squelch to 91.5, and the transmit tone squelch is 91.5 there we go we can hear it now so now what I can do is save that to the memory so you press and hold VM and then we'll choose a channel so I want it in channel 65 so it's red which means there is a channel already there you can see 64 doesn't have one it's blue I'm going to overwrite what's in channel 65 anyway hold down and press VM and then it's saved you can see we're now in channel mode as well. If you go to function now, hold down function, go to channel mode, press enter on there, and go to option number 11, and set the name. We can set the name in there. I always go backwards, kind of get used to the alphabet backwards, and forwards for numbers. Oh, forward for numbers. Oh, 
are in you. There is you. There it is. There you go. So that's set. And press back there. And there we go. We've got it in there now. Here's a pretty cool feature in Chirp. What I'm going to do is upload to the radio. But I don't know what communication port to use. So what I'm going to do is click on the help me. And it says unplug your cable if needed. It is unplugged. Now plug it in. Click OK. And it'll say, hey, port number 11 has just been plugged in. Populates it for you. And that's pretty cool. So what I've done so far is I've actually downloaded all the information from the radio and I've added in three channels here at the top. So they're my three simplex frequencies, the call channels and national call channels that I wanted to put in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to download the two meter data. So I go to query, repeater book, I've got Australia there, and I'm going to filter via VK3. I'm only going to do the 2 meter band. I'm only going to do FM, I don't want digital. And let's see how that looks. So you can see, there it is, all in an instant, and it's on a different tab here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same, but I'm going to do it for 70 centimetres. So BK3, only certain bands, not 2 metres, but 70 centimetres, and only FM. So now I've got two tabs here, one for 2 metres, one for 70 centimetres, and this is what's on the radio at the moment. So now what I'm going to do is grab the 2 metre data, Control A and copy, and then I'm going to start it from channel 4. It'll overwrite the existing memories, I'm fine with that. And there we go, it's, it's in there. So, a couple of things you can see here it's already got the tones put in, you can, um, it's already got the mode, so you can change here as to whether it's part of the scan or not. That's what the skip is. So, the S is for skip, the S doesn't mean scan, it means skip. We've got the location here, so that's what will be displayed on the radio. And that has automatically filled in like that. So now I'm going to do the 70 centimetre repeaters, but I want to put in some simplex channels first. So one of them is 432.1, which is the call primary channel. No tone required there, I just make sure it's on FM and not narrow FM. I want my power to be high. And I'll just put a note here saying it is the primary channel. So I remember what it is. I want on channel 43, this the secondary call channel. Again, I'll set this to high. Now for me, I'm going to put in the APRS 439.1, that's the APRS frequency. Um, don't need it in this radio, but um, I'm keeping it consistent across all my radios, so I know when I go to the same channel, it's that channel. I might take that out of the scan, because that would be annoying. And one day I might plug in that radio to APRS, which would make it quite interesting. Now what I'm going to do is go to this tab here and get all the 70 centimetre frequencies, or repeaters, and I'm going to paste them in. It'll overwrite, and there we go. And that takes me right through. So I leave a bit of a gap there, probably should leave more of a gap, but that's what I've done. So I'm just going to put the International Space Station in there. Uh, while I'm on a roll, I'll do it on this side. Put these frequencies in here, because these are quite interesting. Then I'm going to take this off, and I'll give it high power. 
and I'll just put here what it is. And there we go, then I can upload that to the radio. It's very simple. So there's all my frequencies in. Now you can use the software that the, for the radio and you'll get a lot more options. I'm gonna run with this for the moment. Uh, up here is a settings tab. Now here you've got quite a few options here as well. So I'm gonna change the, work, the startup screen to my call sign, just to see if it works. What else shall I change? A few things here, hand mic brightness, you can change that. Beep volume, so I've turned that off because that was annoying me. This is a pretty cool feature here. One of the downfalls of the Anytone 778 is that the knob on the front is actually channel select and not a volume knob, which is very annoying, but you can change that here in the settings. So if you select here, I'm going to change it to volume, which will mean that as soon as somebody's talking really loudly or not soft enough, it's easy to change the volume, especially when you're mobile. That's exactly what you want. Now I'm going to go to key assignment, which is the next tab there. And now I can change P6. Instead of volume, I can change it to channel. Well, in actual fact, the radio is quite smart because it knows that we don't need it as volume anymore. So it actually automatically changes it to channel, hence why it's not on this list here. But when you reboot the radio, it'll be on there. So now I'm uploading all those settings to the radio and we can test to see how well it worked. So here it is downloaded. So this now changes the volume, as you can see. And you can see here, P6 is changed to channel. So if I press that, I can then change what channel I want to go to. A lot better than having the volume via that button there, I think. Looks a lot better. So you can see on my screen what I've got as my um, shortcuts. And then on the second screen when you press function, that's what I've got as my shortcuts as well. So let's see what happens when I power it on now. Oh, there we go. That looks pretty good. So I'm just going to show you how to unlock the radio. So if you hold down function P4 and then turn it on. And it'll boot up. And you're in test mode, as it said. Go to channel 43. And hold down the PTT button. Change it to number 2. And then you can power it off. And now you've just unlocked the radio. As simple as that. So I'd say this is a great radio. My only criticisms are is the heat sink. I'd probably prefer that to be a bit bigger than what it is so the fan doesn't need to come on as much. Um, but that's only a minor criticism. These labels for the buttons, it'd be really good if there was a table in the manual. manual so you could quickly look up and remember what they are but you can read through the manual and hunt them out anyway but otherwise i think it's a great radio and uh, i've tested it quite a bit and people are uh, quite happy with the response like i said at the beginning it's not a new radio at all but it seems to work really well the other thing i don't like is you can only display the frequency or the name and there's enough space there when you're not using dual watch to put the name in there as well but that's only a minor criticism well i hope you've enjoyed this review and got a couple of things out of it please like and subscribe if you have and let me know what you like about this radio or don't like about it don't forget we do have a blog that has lots of information on there also which i think you'll enjoy thanks again for watching and hope to see you on the next time